In the 15 to 24 age group, which is what we're dealing with with the athletes, sports is the second most common cause of head injury next to motor vehicle accidents. I think that it's very important that we have a grading system and return to play guidelines to help the clinician who takes care of athletes make a cogent decision on what should be done for this athlete and when they will be able to return to play because our main goal is to protect the athlete. So when an athlete suffered a head injury um, during play, the first rule is they should never return to play that day. No same day return to play. Um, because you're not always sure what happened. So it's better to get a, an idea of the situation, be able to evaluate, see whether they do testing on the sideline to get an idea of what the severity of the injury. Now, it could be conceivable that it was nothing serious, that they, all they did was have a bump on the head, that it wasn't going to be anything to keep them out of play. But I think to be safe, they shouldn't be allowed to, to go back that day. And the neurocognitive testing is getting to be routine now. The athletes take the test before they're going to participate in sports. We now have a baseline. If they have a head injury, then they, they do another test, and we compare it to baseline. It's just another bit of information that helps you make a decision on when it's safe to return to play. I have these five grades of, of head injury, and the first being the bump on the head, the second, the trauma-induced um, headache, which is often a migraine-like headache, and then the third, fourth, and fifth categories are the traumatic brain injuries. The grade three injury, it's based on some of the data in the medical literature and, and personal experience and also consensus, that if the, the athlete's unconscious for less than one minute, or if the amnesia is less than 30 minutes, I consider that a mild brain injury or grade three. So with grade four injuries, I, I think that it's an athlete who's been unconscious for more than a minute, less than five minutes, or amnesia more than 30 minutes, but less than 24 hours. A grade five injury are the severe head injuries. Now, many of these we know, and we know how to handle. There's a bleeding into the brain. There's shearing injuries where you tear the axons or you tear the brain itself. Um, there can be increased intracranial pressure. Um, there can be a subdural hematoma, which is below the membrane covering the brain or above it, the epidural. Or, uh, and these can all be life-threatening. In that category, I do include patients or athletes who have been unconscious for more than five minutes or have amnesia for more than 24 hours. There's new information that athletes with repetitive mild traumatic brain injuries, seemingly mild traumatic brain injuries, have a progressive, what they call talopathy, similar to what you see in Alzheimer's disease. And they'll develop a dementia, and they'll develop um, personality changes, and they call this chronic traumatic encephalopathy. With the first category, in the first grade, of the bump on the head, contusion, laceration, there'll be just pain in that one site. The minute they're cleared to play and there's healing of the area, I think they can return to play. With the second category, and that's the post-traumatic headache, the headache that was uh, induced by the head trauma, but there wasn't evidence of a traumatic brain injury clinically. I think that they can start what we call the return to play protocol once the symptoms have resolved. What they, if the protocol is a five-stage uh, gradual increase in activity that if the athlete tolerates, they can then safely return to play. With that grade, I think that they should have their neurocognitive testing performed. Grade three injury, now we have a traumatic brain injury. We have that, those chemical changes that occur in the brain. Usually the mild injury aren't going to have permanent um, damage, but they could. There's no way to tell right now. We just don't know that. Not only do they have to be asymptomatic and go through the five-day progression protocol, but I make them wait at least 10 days before they're subjected to any type of activity where they could potentially have head trauma. And the reason for that is the syndrome called the, the second impact syndrome, that if patients are in the throes of a traumatic brain injury, they're still symptomatic, and they have another traumatic brain injury, there are case reports that say that that could be catastrophic and could result in death.
with my grade four injury, and again, that's the one where they're unconscious for one minute to five minutes or have amnesia from 30 minutes to 24 hours, I keep them out longer. The first S injury is 30 days, and then it increases to 90 days and then 180 days. I limit that to the, the, the grade four to three such injuries. Let's say somebody's had a grade four in the past and then they have a grade three. I still treat that as a grade four, so I always treat them by the highest grade that they've ever sustained. With the grade five, this is a very difficult situation. If we see hemorrhage in the brain, we see evidence of a contusion, increased intracranial pressure, that's a severe head injury. There's, I probably would say they should never go back. But let's say that they're unconscious for five to 10 minutes or they had amnesia for two days, there was nothing on the brain MRI scan, or maybe only a skull fracture that didn't do trauma inside the brain, intracranial damage, just a fracture. Well, if they're stable, they're cleared by neurology or neurosurgery, I think that after probably six months, they could return to play. But again, it'll be up to the judgment of the neurologist, neurosurgeon, or sports medicine practitioner to decide at that point, should they go back.